welcome everybody. Uh, good afternoon. And we are here to present you uh, our open source contribution we did on Apache Lucene to generate synonym on the fly by using WordVec model. Before starting, let me just introduce myself. My name is Daniele. I am a soft Italian software engineer. Uh, I got a master's degree back in 2014 at the University of Pisa. I am passionate about coding. I also love eating, but doing sport as well. Pass into Ilaria. Hi, good afternoon. It's a real pleasure for us uh, to be here today. So we would like to thank Berlin Bazua for the opportunity and also the audience for uh, joining our talk. My name is Ilaria Petretti and I'm Italian, but I live in the Middle East. I've been working as information retrieval machine learning engineer at SIS after um, earning a master in data science in 2020. And I have passion for data mining and machine learning techniques and, and mainly deal with their integration with the information retrieval system. And in general, I like all kinds of sports, especially basketball, since I was a basketball player. So now, just a quick intro about our company, uh, CIS. Um, it, it was founded in 2016. Uh, it is headquartered in London, but all the employees um, are uh, distributed worldwide, mainly in Europe. We are open source enthusiasts, and we are Apache Lucene Solar Elasticsearch expert. We are active, um, contributed back to the community, for example, with our search quality evaluation tool, the Rated Rank Evaluator, and we have active researchers. So we always work on um, avant-garde topics, um, since the mission of CIS is to build a bridge from academia to the industry through um, open source softwares. Uh, since 2019, uh, we have been organizing the London Information Retrieval Meetup. Uh, that is an event that, due to the COVID-19 pandemic, uh, it became a hybrid, so is in person in London and also uh, online. So if you want to attend it or if you want to present your project, so just feel free to contact us and or visit our website. And finally, yes, this is our hot trend, so we, we, we mainly work uh, we may work on neural search uh, natural language processing learning to rank document similarities search quality evaluation and relevance tuning so now this is the agenda so what we are going to cover with this talk today uh, I will briefly start with an introduction of a synonym expansion so what is the state of the art um, what are the limits coming from the current approaches and what is what we are proposing today. Then just a quick intro about where to back algorithm. After that, we will uh, explore our contribution to Apache Lucene uh, that integrate where to back into the text analysis pipeline. And then we will um, explore in detail our implementation, showing you also some examples, some practical examples at both index and query time. And finally, our futures works. So let's get started with synonym expansion. So how and why synonyms are used in search? As already known, when executing a query, the term generated at index time uh, need to match those of the query. So let's have a look at this example. Uh, best places for a walk in the mountains. We know that a walk can be expressed also with other terms, hiking and trekking. But if the text was indexed using, the, um, for example, the term hike and the user during the query will enter a walk, maybe it could not find the, that document. That's why it's extremely important to make the search engine aware of synonyms. So uh, synonym expansion is a technique used in information retrieval um, that allow to um, express the same information need in different way in order to um, enrich the search, key, uh, search keywords and improve recall. So. Uh, the state of the art in Apache Lucene and Solar is the vocabulary-based synonym expansion. So at the moment, the simplest way 
to um, implement synonym is feeding um, a search engine uh, a vocabulary that contains a mapping between all the word and the related synonym. So you can simply add a static list of synonyms, comma separated, written in a TXT file, and then let the synonym graph filter read, uh, read them from there. And here you can see in the example code how you can use the synonym graph filter uh, with Solar. So you can manually build the synonym list or you can download a vocabulary uh, from WordNet, for, for example, that is uh, the um, a lexical synonyms database that uh, for um, English language from um, Princeton University uh, that is constantly updated. So it's a very large and high quality uh, list of synonyms. And then um, in 2020, our uh, SIS director, Alessandro Benedetti, contributed to Apache Lucene, integrated these features uh, and introducing a new filter, the, the limited boost filter, that has given the ability to assign, to associate a um, dif uh, different numerical weight to uh, each synonyms in order to boost the ones that are more important and that are closer to the original concept. But yeah, what are the limits coming from this uh, approach? Uh, this sentence um, is a good example for explaining them. So the term daemon in the domain of operating system article is not a synonym of devil, but it's closer to the term process. So, as we can see, vocabularies don't necessarily match with your contextual domain. And also, uh, we, vocabularies are not always available for all the languages. They will change over time, so they will require manual maintenance and also the cost will, will be higher. And, and finally, yeah, synonym expansion for a word is based on its denotation and doesn't into account the connotation. So what I mean is the context in which the word appear. Because, for example, in real life, people, people tend to use a word um, as if they were synonyms, but then by grammar rule, they, they aren't. So how can we solve this problem using machine learning? Why not use a word to back neural network to generate synonym on the fly? And this is what we are proposing and what we have integrated in Apache Lucene. First of all, we would like to thank the holder of the book Deep Learning for Search, Tommaso Teofili, for expiring us with this contribution. Uh, what are the advantages of this solution? For sure, having a search engine that is able to use a neural network to generate synonyms accurately from the data to be ingest, rather than manually building a list of synonyms or downloading vocabularies, will help finding more matching and avoiding missing um, relevant search results. This, um, this uh, approach is language agnostic, so we don't care. Uh, the language we use, whether it's formal or informal, because no grammar, all syntax are involved, since the, the main uh, idea is to consider the nearest neighbors of a word. Okay, now just a quick intro about word to back uh, because it's not the purpose of this talk and of uh, this contribution going into the details, but I want to give you an overview because maybe most of you knows it, but maybe some are not. So. Word2Vec is um, one of the most common neural network-based algorithms for learning word representation that it takes a corpus in input and it will output a series of vector representation, one for each word in the corpus, that are called neuro, uh, word embeddings. So they represent word with numbers. Uh, the main idea behind Word2Vec is the distributional hypothesis. So, uh, words that appear in the same context tend to have similar meanings. So, as a consequence, two similar words in terms of semantic will be identified by the model with two vectors that are close to each other in, in the space. Word2Vec is an unsupervised learning technique. Uh, it is a feed-forward neural network, so where the information flows from the input layer through the output layer without any loop. Uh, the input is encoded using one hot method. The hidden layer is just one, that's why it is called shallow, 
uh, neural network and not deep neural network. And the number of neurons in the, um, in the hidden layer is an hyperparameter that you can uh, set up, so you can choose the value, and it will be the desired embedding size. The output is also a one out encoded form, and then the, the word embeddings will be the vectors from the network. So you will get, you will obtain word embeddings from the weight matrix, from the, from the hidden weight. Now I, I just want to briefly um, tell you the difference between two different um, architectures that you can choose, continuous bag of word and skip gram. Uh, both algorithms um, use nearby word uh, to extract the semantic uh, of, of a word into a bedix, but they are, as you can see from the picture, they are exactly the opposite. So, uh, continuous Bagos word, um, the distributed representation of a context, so um, the near, near born bo near boring words are used to predict uh, a target word. While skip gram uh, is the opposite, so we will uh, use the distributed uh, representation of a word to predict the context. But how? Uh, what is a context? So how we can define the neighboring words? Uh, through another hyperparameters, that is the window size. So uh, word to vec for each sentences. Uh, it will read work in a sliding window of n word. So let's have a look, for example, of this, this sentence. The cat chased the mouse up to the den. This sentence is split into fragments, and each fragment is fed to the neural network as a pair that consisting of a target word and then the contest. So, for example, let's have a look at the third row. So, given a window size of two, and a target word, that is chess in this case, we will pick two words before the target word and two words after the target word. So the context will be the cat, the mouse. And so the word pair for training will become chess the, chess cat, chess the, and chess mouse. Now, for the word to vec implementation, we use the deep learning for J library that at the moment is, seems to be one of the most, uh, uh, one of the best choice for a native Java library for deep learning. It is open source and um, it, it was written in Java, but it has interfaces for other languages. It is integrated with Hadoop and Apache Spark. It has a good developer community, and what we what we have used is an out of the box implementation of word to vec that is based on Skipgram architectures, Skipgram skip model, and it's very easy to use from scratch. So you have just to set up the parameters and pass the the input test. And then, yeah, uh, this slide just for your curiosity, I want to show you uh, the deep learning for J word to vec model output. So after training the model, what you will get is a zip that contains several files, and one of them is uh, a TXT called scene zero. And it contains a vocabulary that in which each token, each word that is base64 encoded, has a vector associated to it. So this is just a simple example because uh, just to show you, uh, because in fact, as you can see, the vector is very is very short. The vector dimension is two, but we know that um, two is too low and it's not enough to capture uh, enough information. In fact, the default value is 100. Okay, now I'll leave the stage to my colleague for the contribution part. Thank you, Laria. So let's now go on the heart of our contribution, what we did. So first of all, we implemented a word to vec synonym filter. This is another uh, token filter like the synonym graph token filter already in place in uh, Apache Lucene. But this time, we are not getting as an input a static uh, file of dictionary, but we generate synonym on the fly by using word to vec Let's start from the problem we had to face for the designing and implementing this uh, token filter. We had to find a way to 
uh, read the model and parse it. We need a smart way to store the model. And finally, uh, we need a way to uh, query the model in order to expand our synonym. To expand, I mean, the term with our synonym. But we already used Deep Learning 4J for generating it. So we have the library. It implements almost everything, because the, if the file is generated using Deep Learning 4J, we can also have a way to parse it. We have a way to uh, query it, query the model to get the synonyms. So it's perfect. It's already done, implemented, tested, and that's, and that's it. But unfortunately, life is never so easy. So when we implement uh, the first prototype, we can show that too many dependencies uh, coming from the library Deep Learning 4J. So that now all these dependencies de became dependencies of Lucene. So when we implemented, uh, we saw that uh, too many conflicts came up, and we had to exclude dependencies, and the source code became a mess. And even more important, when we do some preliminary tests, we noticed that the search is quite, is, it was quite slow, because it was taking about 70 milliseconds for each synonym expansion. OK, I did this test on my laptop. I didn't use a, a so performant uh, computer, but 70 milliseconds is still too much. So let's do a step back. What do we have to do? We have a, a word. We want to extract uh, the vector coming from the word to vec model and put it this vector in the uh, forest, let me say, in the vector space uh, generated by uh, the list of vectors generated by word to vec And we have to select the vectors that are closer enough to our query vector. So in this case, we selected a subset containing, for example, A, Z, and T, while W is our query term and our query vector. But this is just a K and N search. So we want to get the K nearest neighbor in this, given a specific value. But this is already implemented in Lucene. So we don't even need to reinvent the wheel. So Lucene implements the K and N search by using HNSW. So just a quick introduction about HNSW. Uh, we've already seen this algorithm, how this algorithm works. Uh, yesterday, uh, during the, the talk of Alessandro Benedetti, I don't know, but if someone of you wasn't here, let me just quickly uh, recap how the algorithm works. So, uh, navigable small world graph means that we are dealing with a proximity graph. So, this is a graph where vectors uh, are represented by nodes. And two nodes uh, are connected by a link if the, vec the corresponding vectors are close enough to each other. Uh, the hierarchical comes from uh, the idea of hierarchical comes from the skip list. Indeed, also the skip list is organized on multiple layers, where on the top layer there are a lot of nodes uh, with small link that connects each other. And on the top level, uh, one link uh, allows you to do a bigger step in, uh, in the list, and then also in the graph. So coming back to the graph, uh, this data structure indeed is structured on diff different layers. On the lower layer, we have a lot many uh, nodes, so we have shorter edges that allows you to Ref, uh, refine your search because you can see your uh, neighbors in near the node where you are. On the top layer, there are few number of nodes with edges that allows you to do a um, long um, hop, and this is useful for fast retrieval. So, how the search work? We start from the top level. And we navigate using a greedy approach. We navigate it through the uh, graph. We select 
the minimum, uh, mi uh, local minimal, that is the node which are with a, with a um, smaller distance with our query vector, and we iterate uh, on the le lower levels, refining the search. At the end, you selected a good approximation of the neighbors um, of your query vector. So this is the, the solution we implemented. So for uh, parsing the model, we don't have anything implemented, so we have to implement our own model, our own, uh, sorry, uh, our, uh, the parser. Uh, currently, the parser supports only the deep learning for j model, but this is designed to be extendable and maybe tomorrow support other models. The parser generates a stream that goes, is read by another uh, component that builds the graph, the HNSW graph that we've already seen. And finally, for query expansion, uh, we use another component already present in Solar, in Lucene, sorry, that allow implement the search explained in the slide before. So, uh, implementing this solution, we notice a drastically improvement on uh, performance during this uh, per, uh, for a query expansion. So, the search time is being reduced by 70 milliseconds to 6 milliseconds, so one order of magnitude less. And we didn't even to add uh, additional dependencies. That's a good improvement. So, how can we use this word to vec synonym filter? We can use it how the synonym filter we already have in Lucene. The, the difference is that instead of getting the static file, we get a model that is the path containing the, the already trained uh, word to vec um, model. We have another parameter that is uh, the format that is currently, okay, we have just uh, the deep learning for J model supported, so we have just one default. Then we have other two settings for limit the number of synonyms retrieved. Uh, one uh, max synonyms per term allows you to, to limit the maximum number of synonyms you we, we want to get, and the mean upset similarity is the minimal similarity between two different terms. Uh, that you want to get in your, so in your term to be considered a synonym. So I, I mean, for example, you have the be your best neighbor is one term with a similarity of 0 0.3, for example. But this is not enough to consider these two terms as synonyms. So I will exclude it. And finally, we have uh, another parameter that is similarity as a boost. So we've been dealing with similarities between vectors, so similarities between terms since a while. <laughs> and why don't we use this similarity value as a boost? So uh, lower similarity means that the term should have a lower relevance, and the highest similarity, highest re relevance. So. This, is, this was the first and the main part of the contribution. But uh, when, we, when Ilaria described the limits of the current implementation, uh, one of them was that we, we doesn't take into consideration the connotation coming from the contextual domain. So this is what we are doing here. Uh, wh what is the best way to do it? So the best way is getting and generating a model starting from your own data. So this is, that's why actually we implemented another uh, external tool. This is a command line tool uh, that, doing, that is doing uh, right this one. So gets a Lucene index as an input, a field name, so where to get data from, and it outputs the, the, mod, the already trained word to vec model. So, okay, this is just uh, how you can invoke the, the tool. 
okay, passing the Lucene index path, the field name, and the output file name. And, and you, anyway, you will get the, the output file name. So looking at the implementation, this is more or less a wrapper over uh, deep learning for j We have a, we first of all iterate over the Lucene index. We generate the model, we train it, and we serialize the model uh, writing the output file. As you can see here, uh, for this is not um, having the best model was not part of our contribution, so we just use the default parameters. But anyway, um, something uh, something to say is that we are uh, using this one as an external tool because, first of all, we don't know the impact on the on the Lucene index on the Lucene performance, and second of all. We cannot uh, this use word to vec deep learning for J, so we don't know. We saw before that there are some um, some mess uh, importing the library. Okay, uh, I see that we don't have too much time left, so uh, this is the links where you can find both the trainer and the, our open source contribution. That is now, the word to synonym filter is now part of the, our fork of the Lucene index, but in a few days, is, we are ready to uh, prepare a pull request to uh, merge the, our code on the official version. Actually, uh, in theory, we should have 40 minutes, <laughs> not 30. <laughs> By the way, yeah, uh, okay, I'm quickly uh, show you some uh, practical user. So uh, I'm going fast. So anyway, uh, just to see how we can use the, the old our contribution. So we are Italians and we want to get uh, some synonyms for Italian. So we download the Italian uh, documents from Wikipedia. That is about 3.4 gigabytes of data. We uh, store all this data in, uh, into an index, and we use the WorldVec model trainer to generate a trained model. Uh, in this case, this example, this is called Wikipedia model.zip. We now use the same model uh, to expand. Oh, okay. okay, we have time, oh, great. <laughs> we now use this model to expand uh, synonym for at query time. So, as you can see here, uh, we generated a custom analyzer where uh, adding a word to vec synonym filter factory. In this case, we use uh, all default parameters and we only pass the already trained model. Open a searcher, ask the client to give me an input term, generating the query, and uh, search for the documents. We, pa we, we launch uh, our test. We pass the, as a word the term computer. This is now part of the Italian dictionary, but everybody can understand. And we got microprocessor, uh, controller, microcomputer, desktop net, notebook, hardware, software chip, mainframe. Each term with its similarity value. Uh, generating the query, we can see now how the similarity value is used as a boost. Indeed, for example, chip has a boost of 0 0.8994, that is the similarity of the term chip, while computer, that is our original term, has a similarity 1. But if you don't want that your uh, uh, synonym expansion will impact performance at query time, you may decide to extend your, um, directly your terms, your documents at index time. So what do we do? Uh, we use the same custom analyzer. We create an index writer. Okay, for this example, we just generated a single document 
with a single value with the same word the computer, and we do the test. Just a note, uh, need to pay attention because if you apply with this approach, if you proceed with this approach, you, ne you need to be aware that your index will be bigger, the index time will be higher, so the process will, will be slower. And if you have to do some fine tuning of the model, something changes, you have to uh, re-index the whole model, the whole the collection again. By the way, uh, we did this example, and just to verify that everything is working correctly, we used Luke to open the index and see, indeed, we found, uh, you cannot see here very well, but uh, we can find the same terms we saw be before in the index. Uh, just a couple of notes. Uh, all the index, all the synonyms retrieved are not proper synonyms. But this is something not depending on our contribution. This is something depend depending on the model. Indeed, we didn't spend time fine-tuning the model because each domain, for each domain, needs a different fine-tuning. But something that actually depends on the contribution is the, what you, the comment, what you can, you can see on the left part. So to read the file, uh, building the HNSW graph, it took about two minutes for uh, about 300,000 vectors. And this is why the HNSW graph is stored in memory. So every time you have to start up a process containing solar, containing lucene, you will have every time to load the, the model and create and build your graph uh, every, every time you start up so, uh, lucene. So we can do something better and pass into Laria for the, our future work. <laughs> Yes, okay, let's conclude this talk with our future works. Yes, so we have mentioned already during the talk, but we just want to summarize them. Uh, as um, Daniele already said, um, the, our current limitation is that the model now is kept in memory. So what does it mean? That, for example, in case of disaster recovery and you have to restart your, uh, your system, it will take longer. So also the loading time will, will increase. And in case of multi-process, you have to load and build the graph. Uh, you have to load the model and uh, build the graph uh, sev several times. So it will occupy memory uh, and time based on the number of processes that, uh, that you have. So how can we plan uh, to, how, how we plan to, to solve it? Uh, what we would like to do is to change the, the model storage part, let's say, to store the model as a Lucene index. So uh, we would like to force it to be on disk instead of memory. So these, these have uh, several benefits, like um, we uh, no longer need to load the model and rebuild the graph because we have it already on file, um, on file system. And then we will load it uh, by the um, memory mapping. So also in case of disaster recovery, it will be, it will be faster. And if you have um, multiple losing instance, um, they will use the same model. So no need to load the model every, every time. Then uh, just some improvements. So uh, they don't depend on our contribution, but it's something that we would like to improve. As already said, we haven't really care uh, so much about the training of the model. We use the default parameters, but we would like to introduce uh, the hyper parameters tuning also in our uh, command line tool. And we would like to uh, generate uh, synonyms also with other language models like BERT, for example. But because at the moment, as we, as we said, the, the only uh, format that we support is the deep learning for J, but the entire architecture is already configured to extend uh, our range of um, possible models. And just, yeah, finally, solar elastic search, open search integration. Why the question mark? Because we haven't really um, uh, investigated that part. So um, we think that when we um, import the um, dependency that contains our contribution, we will, um, we will have the, uh, the new features for free, but we have to 
We have to check it if there is something to, to adjust. And yeah, and finally, we would like to introduce multi-term synonyms because at the moment we can create embedding just for, for unigrams. So uh, stay tuned because it's only the beginning and the best is yet to come. And thank you very much for your attention. Wow, well, thanks a lot. Uh, it was a really interesting talk. Um, so, because we're running behind in time, I'll just ask a question that was um, posed online. Okay. And then whoever has a question here, I guess Daniela and Ilaria will be around and you can... Yeah, we will be here if you have questions. And, ...and ask. So, I'll, I'll pick the question with the most votes, um, just to be fair. So, the question is, I have often found um, near word vectors rather unrestrained. Queen might lead to monarch, but also to king or crown, which are not synonyms. Did you encounter this? Do you have any strategies to mitigate that? Uh, to be honest, we, can I sorry, can I see the yeah, definitely. question again? So. Okay. That the similarity that maybe not. Yeah, this is depends mostly from the document you have. Uh, the data you have and uh, how you fine tuning your model. <laughs> this, there is not a specific answer for uh, this question. Actually, uh, you have to try and uh, different parameters, and until you don't find a good uh, train, a good good model, uh, you know these kind of things you have to try. Yeah, what they say about machine learning: garbage in, garbage out, right? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah. Um, as already said, um, um, words that appear in similar contexts tend to have similar meanings, but we know that, for example, uh, synonyms and antonyms appear in the same context. So it's extremely important that algorithms ingest a lot of data, a large set of documents in order to be able to find some sentences where these words appear in different sentences, so it can figure out that they aren't similar and they will assign different word vectors. So. Yeah, I guess that makes sense. I mean, yeah, we can ask how many data the, uh, <laughs> do they ingest for this example. Yeah, yeah. I, I guess you can... Um, anyway, the one uh, feel free to contact us if you have other questions and we, will, we are happy to, uh, yeah, to, this, to have a discussion. You can also contact um, Daniela and Ilaria online and um, ask your questions. Uh, um, so let's thank the speakers again. Yeah.